Like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll throw out, I'll throw Henry Rollins under the bus because he's been run over by a bus <laughs> about 600 times and he doesn't get never liked him anyway. And like, well, you know, I, he's a I love Henry Rollins and I'm, I was a huge, huge black fat, uh, black flag fan in high school because <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few, I've had a few whiskeys. Uh, her name is RuPaul. Okay, sh- oh, no. No. Shut up. Joe's over. But come on. I didn't. Come on. Oh, come on. It was the whiskey. If it was illegal to say stupid things into a microphone. Why must you be so stupid? These guys would be doing life without parole. Hey, everybody. We're back from prison. Why do we keep encouraging this kind of behavior? It's the Breaking the Ice podcast with Josh Dolan. You know, we could, like, go to jail for this. Along with Mike Shue. And Isaiah Moskahanna Bonsa Mana Blitz Boskowitz. Whatever the hell his name is. What up? Hey. Noonan, what's going on, man? Hey, there you go. What's up? There he is. Oh, you got some hey, ceiling guys. fan action. Oh, yeah. We got. Got the big bucks. We got to do it quick because uh, Will's uh, mother in law is in town. She doesn't approve of any of this shit. So he's basically hey, hey, hey. undercover. Future you know, mother in law. She hates. Uh, she, oh, really? See, that's even worse. That's even more pressure. She doesn't right. appreciate your nonsense. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> now that's shoe. That's how you sound to me. That's the shoe I know, not the shoe I met. Like the your radio voice is the voice I know you into that microphone. You know, when oh, I met okay. you at the weed thing. I just heard your voice. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like this is my voice through processing. And then when I don't have processing, I just sound like a stone, fat, hairy Asian. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I sound like David Chang, right? Basically. Isn't that what that is? I like is? the processing. I like yeah. the processing. Now, nice. what, what, what was the weed thing? Because that could be a convention or a meeting in the woods. Um, <laughs> it, well, <laughs> it was 420 and uh the Shocking. folks at resonate uh cannabis dispensary here in worcester and they have uh they got another location in northampton put on a uh a five i think it was a five course dinner was that it well was it five courses yeah it was a lot of courses it took like three hours yeah thing. it was so it was all uh cannabis infused gourmet food done by a chef named St- this guy has the best chef name ever Stephen Champagne. Ooh. I didn't even know that. Oh, right? <laughs> I <had to> say, <laughs> everyone goes, oh, everyone does that same exact thing when you say, I'm Stephen Champagne. Oh, oh, oh well. Fancy. Gee, I, I mean, and you have to be a chef with that name. Yeah, he really yeah. is not other, a, a chef or a drag queen. You know, either. <laughs> right. either one yeah. things, and you, right? have to, you have to open a restaurant called The Champagne Room. Right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, really, any room he's in is the champagne room. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, the whole house is the champagne room. Uh, but he made uh, like cannabis infused uh, courses. It was mostly the the cannabis was mostly in the sauces and the aiolis. He had a, yeah. a cubano that had a spicy mustard infused with cannabis. He had an onion soup that was infused. He had a uh, a swordfish with some kind of sauce on it. Oh, and fuck. then he had a beef short rib that had a gorgonzola sauce infused. With that was the dip. best. That was the one that. The that was the one rib. I ate the whole thing. I was like, "We'd be <laughs> damned." I don't care how much THC is, and it <laughs> right? tastes so good. How well, high was your body after that meal? What about you? I, I just. You I felt sleepy um, when when I was still there. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought the I thought the soup was like the first course i really went light on it and uh a few people left like 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 but like in the middle like they were like i'm too high they left right uh i'm fucking seeing things i gotta go (laughs) but i i did a set between the last course and dessert and i don't normally smoke before i do comedy for this reason because it's like you're i was up there i was like how long have i been up here i I was like no my i had had like no microphone and i was kind of like how long have i been up here like how many weed jokes do i have and which ones have i done and i was just kind of like also this is i I was like i'm pretty good like yeah (laughs) at the end you're like i got one more and then you went uh fuck it my name yeah (laughs) thank you so much yeah (laughs) 
you know, like Josh will tell you, it's like when you're doing stand up, you're sort of saying one thing, thinking of the next thing you're going to say. And there's all this like yeah. random shit. And it was like, I was missing that gear. Like I was kind of like, oh yeah, I'm going to tell that joke. I'm going to close on that joke about tattoos. Like after this. <laughs> and it's and not I'd going on. And in your, like, you're so high. You're actually saying it out loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, and then I'd finish and I'd go, now I'm going to do that next joke. And then I'd go, I don't remember. I'm out. That's yeah. that's why I stopped drinking before doing comedy was because it was alarming when I was done with my set and then I said when do I go on? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like you're done. <laughs> I was like yeah. that's not good. It's, like, uh... I don't know. Whenever you want to leave the living room, that's fine with me. That was a cool thing, though. The, the dinner was was awesome. I've never been to one of those before, at least not like as organized. And and we were in a in an actual kitchen. It was the uh, niche hospitality group. No, wait, we've done those. It was in your kitchen a couple of years ago with an ounce a week. No, we didn't eat that, did we? I don't know. <laughs> I think I remember eating some. But it was it was pretty awesome, and uh, I. I thought I had abstained through the whole night because I had to get up early. And so I asked the chef, can you put all the sauces on the side? And I think I made a mistake because when they brought out the soup, it came with like a little crostini and it was like halfway in the soup. And I said, you know what? I'll just eat this and that'll be my taste. And I ate that. And then, you know, they bring the sauces over and I just dip my fork in the tip of my fork and just taste it, you know, cause I wanted to taste what, and, Oh, let me tell you this. It's pretty awesome. I remember like eating weed consisted of just brownies and it tasted like a burnt rope floor mat. Piece of shit. Yeah, right. It tasted yeah. awful. And this was just, just delightful. Yeah. And, this was and, just like gourmet food. Like it didn't, yeah, you didn't had no taste clue. weed. Yeah. And then like an hour in, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I feel funky, you know? And, yeah. And then like the guy from Westwood one called me and he was, I probably shouldn't be saying this. He called me, he goes, listen, um, the Derek Chauvin, verdict came out and i need you to ch i record for them like voice tracks for other radio stations mostly west coast <laughs> South. it's not a good time <laughs> and uh i was he was like you got to uh, oh, I redo a couple of breaks and mention the Derek chauvin verdict i was like <laughs> yeah <laughs> that what, fucking what was breakfast. that again <laughs> So I, at, well, after you left, I stayed a little bit, Will, and then I walked around the friggin' Centrum like three times trying to get some fresh air in my lungs and walked up to the radio station and it took, I just had to do four 30 second breaks, basically just saying what the verdict was. No opinion. There's no thought. Just <laughs> put the news out there. Yeah. It took me like an hour. <laughs> I was just like trying to figure out why my headphones weren't working. You know, it was just like... <laughs> Let me give you my opinion on that motherfucker. Oh, oh, it was a fucking mess. Were you laughing through yeah. the whole thing? He's guilty. I know. It's like, <laughs> I was like, he totally oh God, deserves I it. I can't believe you <laughs> trusted me to do this. But well, the guy who was the, sh the chef, he something. was very high. Remember him? Did I know. He was hilarious. Champagne? Yeah. Because was... champagne's tasting it all day, you know? So <laughs> fucked up. All yeah. day. He was eating that stuff all day, but the food was still pretty awesome. That's the best yeah. job. Was that the weirdest place you ever did a, a set? If you want no to call way. it a set, I mean, not even close. You don't have a microphone. No, I mean, it's kind of like I wish sometimes I was a musician because at least I could like sing a song or play a song or something. Because it's like, because that happens to them too. I've been at things where they're like, "Oh, come on, sing us a song," you know, and people do it. But when people want you to just do comedy and there's no microphone, like I thought there was going to be a microphone and cameras and everything. That was kind of what they told me. So then when we got there and they were like, they were like, yeah, there's no microphone. And like, you're just going to talk. And I was like, oh, well, this is going to be like, not even like be. a lav mic, not even like the David Zero, Letterman like, mic. No, he I literally just like a walked small in. kitchen. Yeah, we're in this walk kitchen and I and just walk into the middle and just go like, so. Oh, my I'm palms are sweaty just hearing this. <laughs> yeah. It was after like four, uh, four or five of these courses of edible. So like every time I make eye contact with someone in the crowd, they're like, like, I don't know. Yeah. Did, um, did the, the, the crowd at least know there was going to be comedy or was it kind of just, think so. I love when they do, I don't get who does these gigs where they're like, and now he's going to tell jokes. Yeah. Like, well, it was like one of those rooms where we're apparently we're all celebrities, but none of us can even recognize each other. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Were there celebrities there? I think it was supposed to be a sort of smorgasbord of like who's who uh, of like weed and, and like resonate people. Cause like we had all done some sort of like event with them or something like that. Oh, okay. Cause it was like, there's a pro uh, football team there and like uh, us got, and they were like, they were like Mikey Adams and shoot Mike shoot. You know what I mean? It was like, they were really like scraping that the bottom up. of the barrel. And I was like, Oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, where are the big names here? You were, the most, you were the biggest name there, man. That's what kind of event this oh, no was. No way. Yeah, Will no Newton. Yeah, you know, you're more people have seen you in like like television commercials and 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 stuff on TV. So. Yeah. So I guess in that, yeah. I mean, that, when, uh, when when Honda's I having a deal, Sox. I mean, you're everywhere. Is it Honda or yeah, Toyota? Like, no, it's Honda. Oh, okay. All right. Josh. Okay. It's. Honda, I would think. Man. I would think Excuse though. Me. All right. <laughs> I would think your 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 biggest video is the most recent one when you went to Patriots uh, Day at Fenway and they fucking zapped you on Nessa. Yeah, that has been Isaiah. Let me tell you how many people that I haven't talked to in 10 years have called me in the past couple of days. Right. It's like uh, I'm the most popular guy in the world, man. I was just he's telling got, my. He's eating, the, he's eating a hot dog. I mean, this is the new normal. You got the fucking chin diaper on. I just commented on your page. I said nothing like a face full of a Fenway Frank and a fucking chin diaper at Fenway Park. I know. Fucking, no. That's the new normal. When I watch that video. When I show that video to like my kids or grandkids, they're going to be like, why do you have that? I'll be like, well, what wow, the fuck's this story. thing? <laughs> and Don, Ars- no, it wasn't Don. Sorry, I love Don Arcilla. Dave O'Brien's great. Hey, there's Will Noonan. The last one funny guy stuffing his uh, face with a hot dog, everybody. <laughs> it was so <laughs> surreal. So surreal and awesome and everything. Like, it was just. I, I still like, I'm just getting my head around it. Like when I woke up the next day, I was like, did that really happen to Dave O'Brien say I'm a funny guy during the Red Sox broadcast? Like what? Oh my God. Was? And he's got the total Tommy TV voice. Like, well, that's a funny guy right there. Funny guy. That's Will. Really? That's Dave where O'Brien. he is. Will Noonan, everybody. Well, yeah. nobody knows comedy like Dave O'Brien. So obviously. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I mean, no. may, maybe Joe Castiglione is a little funnier on the radio. Well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know what though? Not to not Joe Castiglione does know comedy though. I've met he's him. He's fucking awesome. And he loves comedy. He loves comedians and he's got like this really high regard for comedy. It was so funny. All I wanted to do was ask this guy a million questions. Right. And he was like, he was like, So what's comedy like? I don't understand how you guys can do that. How do you get up there and do those jokes? <laughs> and I was like, he's like, You're all alone up there. And I was like, Joe, I think you get you should do the games alone, you know. I was like, I was like, I, 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 I like Vince Scully, you know, and he goes, no, no. He's like, no one wants to listen to that. You know what I mean? He's just so like. <laughs> his memory, his memory is uh, spectacular. You'll sit and he'll, he'll recall in 1986, the afternoon that Roger Clemens threw the 20, like what the fuck? You know, it was an overcast crazy. day. It was 56 degrees. I'm like, I don't even know what fucking day it is now. Oh God, I took my son on a tour of Fair Academy that day. I remember our tour guide's name was Janice. Uh, <laughs> very nice girl. She had a, and he always, gig at a star he, market. He can work it. He, he works in the client so well, too, because Shaw's is their big spot. You know, it's like, I you know, it's her. a lovely day, and I think I'm going to go get some strawberries from Shaw's. I know. Yeah, yeah, he'll do that. Like, my throat's hurt me. It's not because I drank Bigelow tea. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I like to take a moment with myself and enjoy a hot cup of Bigelow tea. And uh, before that fucker Dave O'Brien shows up and ruins my mood. <laughs> That'd be great to yeah. have Joe Castiglione in the, the audience when you're doing comedy. And then if, you know, a joke doesn't land it and a swing and a mess. <laughs> I would love that so fucking much, Josh. That one did like, not land. Wow. wow. <laughs> you expect more from the guy. You expect more from Noonan this this late in the season. He's oh, the one that gave point. me free tickets. <laughs> sort of, sort of dis- Noonan, kind of a disappointment. Uh, expected I hope this of, place uh, validates. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jack Edwards is next to him, just screaming about some historic event nobody remembers. Man. <laughs> right. <laughs> Put all the announcers on one podcast and just let them go the fuck right off. Oh no, bring them to all the comedy shows. You know, it's like that yeah. bombed like Nagasaki. <laughs> no, Edwards Jack would be awesome standing in show. show. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I've done. Uh, Tom Karen has come to see me do comedy a bunch of times, and he's, oh, yeah? a, he's a yeah, he's a great guy, and uh, he doesn't cool. really have the voice like like those other guys do. He's a little more like. Uh, 
But uh, one time after a comedy gig, he was like, we were down in Florida and he was like, hey, can I get a ride with you guys? My hotel's on the way. And, and we were like, yeah, yeah. And I like was sitting in the backseat of the car and I was like, sitting in the backseat with Tom Karen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was right. like weird. <laughs> it was like weird. I was like, I wanted to like poke him and be like, are you real? <laughs> and he's not. <laughs> It's not. Yeah, he floats away. He takes his mask off. It's just Joe Castiglione. He's like, I'm trying to make some extra bucks. Oh, my God. Were, then, you, were you super high when you were hanging out with him in the back seat there? No, dude, I actually wasn't. When I was in Florida, I was really not high at all because it was uh, tough to get weed down there. It was like, all right. No, it's not. They're not. For me, it was. I didn't they, know. they moved on to more aggressive drugs. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're way past <laughs> weed. They're in the bath salts and friggin' drain yeah. out. Meth was growing on trees down there, but just right, to find some weeds. Yeah, for beautiful down here. I mean, that's great if you want to get your homework done, but what can you do? Yeah, right. not if you want to relax. After. Have you ever have you ever met somebody like a super like a star like whatever sports, <laughs> movies, music, and you were super high and you were like, "Why am I meeting them now? I'm too fucking yeah. high to talk to this guy." Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, that has happened. Isaiah, what's your story? Kevin James. Happened? I met. I was. I was. I was. I was doing a. I was doing a. I was doing a show. I was working in radio in Portsmouth, and I was doing all the intros at the casino ballroom. Right. I am fucking so high, and I just go backstage, and he's back. I think he's fucking hysterical. He's sitting back there. He's got a Kangol hat on backwards. He's playing cards with. Sorry, Kevin. What looked like a stripper. And, and he was fucking, <laughs> he was a dick because the person at the casino is like, hey, this is the guy from the radio station. He's like. Yeah, so I'm so fucking high. I'm like, I just want to be like, dude, I think you're funny, but you're being a fucking cunt right now. And I'm so <laughs> mad. I'm just like, I, but I left and I got so angry. I'm like, that fat piece of shit. I'm the one with the fucking microphone before you come on. You should be nice to me. And then I'm like, no, nah, I shouldn't probably slam the guy before his show. So yeah, he's up, I say. Because uh. <laughs> radio, so radio, radio people, and I, I've run into this a lot over the years when you're in that situation, you have to do stage announcements and right. they introduce you to whoever, the comedian, the band, whatever it is. And like, this is the radio guy. He's going to do the announcements. And they all kind of turn their nose up because radio person is one step above Carney pretty much. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so that's no, it's the only because, person. Yeah. Cause Kevin more James than comedian. is like, Oh, radio guy. Yeah. He's dealt with morning show people all the time. And so he's probably like, oh, a radio guy. Well, this he's asshole. probably one, he's he's a dick. Two, he's probably high as a kite. And three, he's gonna fucking shit on me on, you know, before <laughs> I come on. You know? It's uh fr from like the outside, I think it's also like sometimes it depends. It depends on like it's like the last radio guy you hung out with. If the last radio guy you hung out with is like awesome, you're like, great, radio guy. If the last radio guy you hung out with is like a total nightmare, you're like, fuck, radio guy. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Oh, I gotta do radio. Fuck. Oh, yeah. he was definitely that, and I was just so fucking stoned. I, it was almost like you saying, you know, how long have I been up here? I'm standing in the doorway, going, "How long have I been staring at him playing, you know, strip poker with this hooker? I gotta go." When I I was high when I met uh, Bobcat Goldthwait, and I was oh my, like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and I was like, "He's very nice too." And I was like, I asked him a question about a movie he directed. And like two seconds into him answering it, he I interrupted him and he looked at me like, dude, like you just asked me a fucking question. Why are you interrupting me? And I I was just like, I'm sorry. And I just like listened to him tell the rest of I'm the high. story. And I was like, nice to meet you. And I like just left. Oh my like, god. Oh that, my god. Just like that's how I am naturally. That's why I'm like afraid to like I've never <laughs> smoked weed, but everyone thinks I'm a huge stoner. And I'm like, I I've never <laughs> had it in my body. <laughs> But like, I can't, I can't, uh, well, I've never really interacted with anybody like being under the influence of anything because it's kind of tough to do that in like morning radio. That's when I met a lot of people and then like, yeah, never really it being like pretty easy for Lyndon Byers. I mean, right. he's, he's a professional though. Right, he's um, a professional. Yeah. <laughs> and also I was driving from Dover, New Hampshire. So I just, I needed to be on my game for the drive. But the, the only time I came close to doing any kind of hardcore drug was Ari Shafir was trying to get me to do mushrooms with him. <laughs> and I was like, I've never even smoked weed. And he was like, oh, OK, uh, do you want to do mushrooms? And I was like, no, that sounds terrifying. And he was like, how old are you? And I was like, 23. And he was like, 
yeah, that's the perfect age to do it. Let's do it. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. No, that's Such the perfect age to do influence. all the drugs. 23 is the perfect age to do all the drugs because no you've fear. got a couple of years under your belt being legal. So you've <laughs> tripled, maybe quadrupled your drinking from when you were, you know, oh. underage. Oh, yeah. And and you've had some experience, you know, out in the world, at least a couple of years. So and your body is still your lungs are still pink. And <laughs> You can still like take a nice ten foot fall and get right back. Right? Up. Oh yeah, very well. <laughs> but that clock is ticking. Like I was just watching some viral video yesterday. Like this dude, he's like trying to jump over a picnic table, and he like completely like looks like he snaps his neck, and he gets up two seconds later, and he's like, Whoa! and he runs away. And I'm like, dude, that is like when you're that age and you're doing stuff like that, you totally think that this is like I'm only gonna get stronger as I get right? older, man. Yeah. Like, absolutely you're invincible right you're never gonna die yeah. i'm 23 i'm never gonna fucking die you know and, and now i feel like i, wake I feel up mistakes in the morning, yeah i wake up i wake up the first thing i think in them when i wake up in the morning is i'm gonna die <laughs> first thing i think of when i when my alarm goes off i hit the snooze button and i go i'm dying i'm gonna be dead by 9 a.m you I made the decision is. to start getting up at fucking four in the morning again, too. That's double yeah. death morning radio. Ouch. That fucking sucked. Ooh. I had yeah, a yeah, huge wake up call not that long ago because I had a, a, I've been trying to walk a lot just to like clear my clear head. head. And yeah, just like it's, it does so much for. It's always good. Health. You know, your head's clear when the guy has to finish the clear your head sentence for you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get his walk in today. <laughs> Clear your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know. that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, clearly, I haven't walked in a few days. But sorry, right. Josh, I had to take the comedian. I'm a, I'm in the humor. Don't I apologize. Do I need I needed the help with that one. Um, <laughs> you left you left an opening. That's not good. This I did. Yeah. At least he helped with what I was trying to say and didn't change it on it. Uh, <laughs> but I just I I had a situation in the woods where I had to run maybe like a quarter of a mile. Had but a situation like, in the woods. I had a situation. Oh, I don't want to get into yeah. the whole the whole story because it's stupid. The kid got away. The rope <laughs> <broke. laughs> Anyway, the kid was a fighter. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I sprinted home and I thought I had to go to the emergency room because I could not breathe. Now I know I had the lung situation and everything, but whew, I was like, I haven't What's exercised. Your lung situation? It it collapsed on me randomly. Oh, uh, it's oh well, yeah. That'll that'll affect a, a, a brisk run. You know what yeah, I mean, like that yeah. sort of thing. But and then, but for, it is true. Like, it, oh, what's up? What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say just for two years, I haven't done any cardio because my my doctor said like, don't do any heavy lifting, don't do any running, like maybe light biking. I was like, what the hell is light biking? Light biking. I was your doctor. Biking. All my doctor says is you should take up running and maybe lift weights and you should exercise more. I want a doctor who says. Don't just take it easy. Sit on the couch for twelve hours. Don't do shit. Don't do anything heavy. Have have a just just have a spontaneous pneumothorax. You'll be good for two years. No, okay. it's true. Yeah. I tried to do a bit about this story one time. I could never get the story to go. But there was this guy. It's a, it's true. It's based on a true story. There was this guy who like pretended to be a doctor for five or six, seven years in a community. Like he had no medical license. He just was like. Eh, you know, most things I can figure out on Google and stuff. And just, <laughs> what? I swear to God, and he loved being like this town's doctor, you know? So eventually he gets something he can't handle and he gets found out. And so he went to jail and it was a big deal. The funniest part of the story is the town wanted him back as their doctor. Oh. They loved him. They, they all said they were he was the best doctor they've ever had. And I'm thinking it's because of shoe because that was the bit I would try and do. He'd be like the only doctor who'd be like, you smoke? Me too. You want to have one? Your blood pressure is kind of high. Can I make you a martini? You yeah, know? yeah. How, how, how many drinks do you have a day? That sounds reasonable. You know what I, I mean? mean? This like, is either other... from like the 1800s or it's definitely in Minnesota or something. I, it was like, I, I actually think it was like Oklahoma, Texas area, but I might be wrong. Was, but I tried to do a bit about it, like about how, of course, people like the doctor that doesn't like really like bother you with like, you know, how much you're right. really eating and how much like he's like, he's more like he wanted everyone to just leave there and like not thinking like he's like a fraud <laughs> he wanted people leaving there feeling good right yeah 
Oh, not so, not so your what a shitty fun. doctor that is, right? <laughs> yeah, but like when it, like it's like I totally would have fallen for that too. Though is what I'm saying. Like I would have been like, yeah, like, he's so great. Like he just. Oh my god. You know what you should, you should I'm pretty you sure should. I, I'm pretty sure I have a tumor growing on my neck, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you like, feel like a million bucks. What a charm. Like, <laughs> inside manners. Like, no, that's not that's a tumor. Awesome. You must be working out. You look great. That's just a new muscle. That's <laughs> hey, like, I think I'm dying of a common cold right now, but yeah. man, what a great guy. You know? I can't feel my arm. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> you know what? Go on vacation and drink a bottle of rum. You'll feel no, better. Yeah, better. here, take all, take all this morphine and go on vacation. That's it's right, on me. Right. You're good. You're good. That's how he eventually got caught. Like he couldn't prescribe anything. You know what I mean? He couldn't like so. He but was at giving some people, point, like, it's on the first of all. The town has a doctor, so that's the first problem. And then yeah. at some point, like at some point, it's your fault for allowing him to do this for what would you say six or seven years? Yeah, yeah years. it was a while. It was a while, and I and, and I, but the, the part of it I remember the most was how the t- the town fought like to get him back, and and I remember like it was something like that. The people were like, "What are you guys fighting for? Like, we can't just give him a doctor's license. Like, he's got to go to medical school, and he's got to get that license. Give him an honorary like, doctorate. Like, Bill Cosby has one. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not like a TV show where we're like, you know what? You're just a doctor. You're the doctor now. I think he, feel, I think he ended he up like opening a, a practice. He's like a maitre d. He made him right. feel good. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, like exactly. concierge. She's like, how can I help you today? Oh, okay. Well, we can take care of that. Sure. You know what? You're looking great. I think you should just go out and smoke a couple of cigars and have some scotch. You'll feel right. a lot better about yeah. yourself. <laughs> now, I, I totally can't relate to that guy because I'm the complete opposite where I'm like being on the radio or doing comedy the whole time. I'm like, they're totally going to find out. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just pretending. <laughs> I'm pretending the whole time. And he's just like, I eh, won't find out. <laughs> That's my life, Josh. That's my life. Someone's going to find out. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Like, I shouldn't. Uh, We all feel that way, right? Doesn't everyone feel that way? Isn't that some kind of syndrome? Isn't there a name for that kind of thing that you're constantly? Yeah, fucking paranoid. Yeah, it's like (laughs) uh, like, imposter syndrome or something. Yeah. (laughs) They're going to find out that I, I shouldn't be here. Every you know, day, what are we, every we're not pretending AF, to be I'd doctors. be like, who the hell do I think I am talking on the radio? I'm like, <laughs> Sorry, I feel like that every fucking day. It's like I turn the mic on and I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, I That's mean, I was, Isaiah brought up the Red Sox. Isaiah brought up the Red Sox thing. That was definitely a part of it. I'm like, did someone do this just to be nice to me? Yes. Like, is someone trying? Right. Is someone doing me a favor? Well, fuck them. I know what their agenda is. <laughs> <laughs> or like when 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 people recognize me and they're like, "Are you Josh Dolan from AF?" I feel so bad for them. I'm like, I lied to these people. They think I'm important. Like, <laughs> I've been lying to everyone. It's true. I'm listening to me on the radio. I feel so, so bad I, for you. I talk about this phenomenon all the time on my show, but it's like I, I I'm obsessed with it because I there's this there's a psychological effect people have um, where, for example, like a movie star you have never seen them like the average human being yourself you you take pisses you take shits you get stomach flus you blow your nose like you see all these sort of disgusting human things that you do right and then there's someone like say taylor swift or julia roberts or a movie star and even though rationally you know that they do all those things too you've never seen them do it so part of your brain is like they don't do it and it even goes all the way down to like your boss where it's like, man, my boss, like he never just throws up or gets to like, you know what I mean? It's like all this stuff that you've done. And uh, you think their laundry is always folded. <laughs> yeah. Like you just, you just assume that you're fucking up and everyone else has it together. Like that's right. what your brain does. Yeah. And I think all this like Instagram and all this social media and stuff has just made us so much more like, man, everyone's got it more together than I do. You know, right. like everybody's living a better life than me. They must be doing yeah. something right because they're vacationing in friggin' the Virgin Islands, and I'm fucking up because here I am in Worcester. You know, <laughs> but it's like you know, oh, they're in the Virgin Islands, and their their lives are so much fucking better. But really, in reality, they're in the Virgin Islands, and somebody's gonna get fucking sun poisoning and be up all night fucking mm-hmm. throwing up because they drank a fucking rum drink in a dirty glass, you know, and they get to yeah. their bowels, you know, or hit a goat on the fucking road, you know, with their oh, rights. Huh? Or, 
I mean, the first time I did t- national television, I had, uh, <laughs> I always think about this. The, the first time I did national television, I was so nervous that I had like diarrhea, you know, before. <laughs> so I on was TV? like, I, no, I'm, but I'm saying like five <laughs> oh. minutes before I went on, oh, okay. five minutes before I went on, I'm in the bathroom, like wiping my ass. Right. And it's like, it's there's like bunching or folding. There's like, I'm what's it so there's like little there's like little spots of like blood on the toilet paper because i'm because oh i've been wiping my ass so much that day like so i'm talking like three minutes to air and i go to myself i go i actually started laughing i was like i'm gonna be on national television and none of them are gonna know that i have like a raw painful bloody asshole right, right now oh, and, and right. i go and I go in that, there's something funny about that. And I just like went up there and it kind of gave me like, put me in a funny mood. It was like the first time I had laughed that whole day. And then I went out there and I had a decent set, but I still think of it every single time I see the video or anything. I'm like, oh man. And then I think, <laughs> how many people have you seen on TV in your life? You just don't know what's going on in those underpants. No you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Movies, That's why movies take three months to film. You know what I mean? Right. So some of those scenes... All kinds of stuff is happening. We got to put a poll out there. How many of you have had a bloody asshole before you went to do your job? Can you <laughs> put think, that on uh, a poll on the website, Josh? It all depends oh, yeah. what the job is. You know, right. like Will saying, you, you're, you're fucking, you're spouting out your ass. And then two minutes later, it's like lights and a live audience and someone in Des Moines going, that guy's fucking awesome. Yeah. Little do they know, exactly. the guy's got, you know, Will's got bacon strips in his fucking underwear. You know, because you couldn't get all of it out, you know, because it's just, it's been going yeah, on. Yeah, like, there. they don't know that I was, like, crying about a breakup the night before. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Jesus yeah. Christ. You, know, you see people on social media, it's like, oh, here we are. We're on, we're on vacation in fucking, you know, wherever, in, in, like, you know, San Diego or whatever. But, like, you don't know that, you know, they lost a bag and baggage claim and that had the guy's fucking you know, fentanyl in it. And like, he was like, then he was out on the street later that night sucking cock because he had to get, oh, you know? Yeah. Right. And then he also right. forgot to tell uh, his sure bank that, people- that he was going to San Diego and they shut his card off. So now he has no right. money. And then right. you're fucked. They but you got the picture on Instagram, right? No, it's, it always happens like that. I mean, I thought Johnny Damon was just living it up in Florida, having a carefree right? lifestyle until I saw that DUI video. <laughs> <laughs> You know what the worst part of that is? He pulled the old, don't you know who I, do you know who I am? That's that is the worst, worst thing. That is the Remember worst. Remember when thing. Punk came out and like Ashton Kutcher did it and like people, celebrities weren't expecting it to happen. A lot of them pulled that out like right away. You know right. what I mean? But Johnny Damon, I can get like when, when you're, you're as, as well known as Johnny Damon and you're hammered and you're scared because the cops are talking to you, that's going to slip out. Yeah, right. yeah no, you're not, it also it, works all the time. Like I've seen it work not, for famous yes. people. I've I've like used what little fame I have to get out of things. Like it works, <laughs> so that's why they're doing it. You're you know the I mean? guy. Oh shit, that's fine. Just pull the syringe out of your arm and go ahead. Huh? Can you make it home? Okay, that's the funniest fine. thing. <laughs> I I had a uh, years and years ago. I had a like an, a deal, an endorsement kind of thing with Skype and Microsoft, right? So they gave me a Surface Pro 3, and it, which I actually still have. It's right here next to me. I still use it all the time. Um, Thank uh, you. Hold on, Will. <laughs> Pause for a second. This is not a paid endorsement on the Breaking the Ice podcast. This is Will Noonan <laughs> actually reporting just information yeah. in a news form. Okay, thank you. It's true. Well, it, was a, it, was a Skype, um, it was a Skype contract, so it was clearly 2006. Right. It really was a long time ago. It was a long, <laughs> long time ago. And it didn't like, it didn't. So anyway, like after, I don't know, a month or something that the thing breaks and um, I needed a new one. Right. And I was like fully ready to just like, like, you know, pay for whatever I had to pay for. Cause I really liked it and stuff. And they were like, just go listen, we're going to take care of this for you. They were like, just go to the Microsoft store, like in Boston, tell them who you are. And like, so I'm like, but they're going to know I'm coming. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, they'll know you're coming. No, so I'm like, okay. So I go to the dude. It was, it's, it's like the only time I've ever even done this. I walk into Microsoft store. I'm like, hi, I'm Will Noonan. I'm like a Microsoft ambassador. And like, <laughs> and then I'm like, they, you guys gave me this free thing. And like, this like 16 year old is looking at me like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Who? Who are you? Like, dude, like. 
you're supposed to be some kind of big deal. You know, it was like, and I was like, oh, they told me they were going to contact you. And it was like this whole thing. I had to like uh, sit there. It was the, still one of the most embarrassing things I've ever done. That's got to be the most, I mean, I didn't even like using like the, the endorsements that like AF had. Like I remember when we were doing the afternoon show, show we had the, the town fair tire thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I had to get four new tires and there was like some deal. Like if like you say shoe sent you or AF sent you, like you got a certain percentage off. Like I'm on the show with you as you're saying that. And I went there and I was like, I'm not saying it. <laughs> not doing it. That wasn't an on air thing. That was me calling in a favor. <laughs> Which is oh. like, I was like, just tell them this, just tell them, you know, I sent you and they owe me, you know, that actually, you know. I remember that promotion because when I used to fill in for Nick Stevens, that yeah. would be my, whenever, whenever a caller would call in and complain, I'd go, Hey, I just saved you money on tires. And this is what you do. You call in and complain about me. I'm saving you money. This is brought to you by town fair tire. <laughs> and what, what, what was the tag? Like you would always stop. And I just remember always yelling off mic, nobody. And I was like, I'm the guy that oh, yells yeah. nobody in the, the thing. <laughs> is that town fair tire? Uh, no. Town oh fair yeah. That's tire. Right. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody, nobody beats a town fair deal. Nobody. Yeah. Yes. Hey, hold on, edit. This is not an endorsement for Town Fair Tire. Go fuck yourself. Oh, even though, <laughs> even though uh, the the guys at Town Fair Tire in Auburn are, are awesome, I just want to throw that in there. Hey, Josh, you got to go in there and say, "I'm Josh Dolan from the Breaking the Ice podcast. I want free fucking tires." Right. And that's when they fucking pull a fucking taser out and they fucking tase you in the neck. <laughs> he finally came oh. in. <laughs> it's only been a fucking year. Yeah, uh, Will, you just talked about a few minutes ago. You said your show. Tell the people what your show is, how people can find your show, all the funny shit you're doing. Uh, I have the Noonan Show. It's a YouTube show. I don't know how much longer it's actually going to be around. So get uh, get on over there and check it out now. Because uh, <laughs> oh yeah, let me, see if, let, me, let me see if it's still out. Hold on. No, it's still out there, but it's like um, you guys know, it's like podcasts are like real business now, and I'm like uh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in talks to like host the podcast and it's like, if I do, I'm going to obviously not have can other do, podcasts. Can we talk about the stuff you were telling me about at the dinner? I don't think I can yet. The, the, okay. the, the Will's podcast. Like, how high okay, are Will, we? Will's, Will's got evidence that the Russians orchestrated the Kennedy assassination, but he can't talk about that right now. So we'll wait. And wow. you know, until oh, yeah, was it the the promo for the thing? show. Yeah, no, I know what, yeah, no, I, the whole meeting I had and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't talk about it. Okay, all right. Sorry. I was just sorry if you wanted to promote that stuff, but never mind. That's okay. No soon, cares. soon no I'll be back to Kennedy assassination and how another foreign power fucking influence. I'm using life. my hair to solve the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thickest hair in the league, right? You there. do have we, Kennedy hair. I mean, that's yeah, that's that's Jack that's hair. That's not Teddy hair. It's not Bobby hair. That's Jack hair. Didn't, People didn't yell he it. Get, didn't he get shot from the grassy knoll? That fucking hair is the grassy knoll. <laughs> yeah. 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 Slid man. the gun right through Will's fucking hair. <laughs> Dan Kennedy. That's, That's how you I can guess. tell there was two shooters. The hair bounced backwards and to the left. That's when what he they got used shot. me for. It goes like <laughs> one of the things that you're at the at the weed dinner, one of your things was like, my brother's actually gay, but nobody thinks he's gay. They all think I'm gay because of my true. hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was, and then there was there were guys there from the worcester pirates and they were just like not interested at all there's one guy who totally was on his phone like the whole time the dinner was going on this guy was oh, on his phone God. and so you know he's on his phone and then will said that like people think i'm gay because the way i look and the guy stopped turned and looked around and will fucking goes oh i finally got the guy from the pirates to turn around and look at me <laughs> it was the fucking best man <laughs> that was so great <laughs> It's good that news. was a genuine. That was hundred percent of a genuine laughter coming from me because I was like, "Oh, now you look. Now you see the gander." I got to look at this guy. There is good news, Will. The YouTube page is alive and well. Oh yeah, we're still there. We're still there. But that's I like this. Saying, day without laughter is a day wasted. Fucking love that. Thank you, sir. That's how. Love that's one of my mottos. We just, you fucking stole that, didn't you? Oh yeah, definitely. It's just a What's saying. It? It's not like I coined it myself. Well, no, no, that's that's <laughs> definitely on. A, that's definitely framed in Home Goods somewhere. Yeah, it's like one like, of the YouTube like they like their backgrounds like from ah! the beginning. That's awesome. 
Didn't you, but, steal, uh, from, didn't you steal that from Carrot Top? Dave got <laughs> laughter. Is, I, I know, stole everything else that? from him. Why not that too? <laughs> uh, uh, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> but you I'm might be looking at there's the Noonan show is our uh, we we just actually we we have some merch and all this stuff and I, and I hope to keep doing it or at least bring it back. But uh, but yeah, it's funny. Like I was just in this thing and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to get rid of that show if we do this new show. But it's it's weird. Like the meetings I have now about or the auditions and meetings I have for hosting podcasts are the same as they were for like hosting TV shows 10 years yeah. ago. It's like the it's same a, idea. It's a Joe Rogan uh, either ruined it or made it better. I don't know. It depends how you look at it, but you know, Joe Rogan, and I don't, I don't think he did it on purpose because if you, if you've been a fan of Joe Rogan's from very early on, it wasn't like he was trying. He's like the guys from South park. You yeah, know, they try to get fired every year, and every year they fucking pay them more to stay on the air. You know, and Joe Rogan is like, "Well, I'm going to have this guy on to talk about how you know the fucking Teflon and pans has become part of our gene pool and whatever." <laughs> you know, and it's and it's like Jamie, close up on that. Look at the fucking Teflon and this guy's eyeballs. You know, and it's like for some reason he just gets better. It, it, he just gets more and more successful because he's yeah, not I mean, doing it for anybody else. He's doing it for him. Right. He's talking to very, people he wants like, to talk to. Right. 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 Exactly. And I have a really like light connection to Joe Rogan. It's like I've been mentioned on the show a couple of times. Like I was part of Sober Oct- I quit cigarette smoking during Sober October, which Kreischer and, and and Joe both thought was like really great. So they said it a bunch of times. So like I'll get messages. I just got one yesterday from a Joe Rogan fan. Cause they're so like loyal that they'll if they hear your name, they'll look you up, right? But it's, it was funny to me. Like it was like, Joe's changed my life, and like if he if he thinks you're like special, then I think you're special, and like you are special, bro. Like you're a powerful man. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm calling I'm like, the Joe's place. like a religious leader to these people, know, man. Like he is. He's like a cult leader. And yeah, like this dude was mean? like, he's changed my life. He's changed he my whole trying. life. Yeah. Yeah. Un- I remember when Joe, like when I was at AAF on the, you know, when I was on the morning show. Like he would come in when he would be coming back into Boston to do some gigs. The security guys downstairs would call us and, and like, do you guys remember what was his name? Ash? You guys remember in the in the New yeah. Balance building? Yep. Yeah. yeah he, he, Ash was the best, and he was like, oh, "There's a Joe Rogan here to see you." And we're like, "Oh yeah, sure, come on out." You know, he would show up and this hang out. That's with so him awesome. The rest of the show, you know, and he'd say stuff like, you know. Um, you know, he'd say stuff like um, Tara Reed's vagina smells like a hospital and stuff, like <laughs> that, you know, and, and, and then all of a sudden, like, he just became like this, like, not just a comedian, but like yeah. a lifestyle leader, you know, yeah, it really like, happened slow to like over 10 years. Yeah. It's not like he didn't work for it. I don't want to No, but I, I don't even think it was like, he did. I think it's like yeah. you said, it was like the show got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it was like he became like the voice in everyone's head. You know what I mean? It was like, if you were, if you were like a tough guy who was also a little artistic, like you found something for you. Like you, you found this guy who like loves MMA, but he also loves to like smoke weed and get deep, you know? And that's like if a you're lot a of guys. Meathead and you do DMT. This is the <laughs> podcast for you. <laughs> and that's like, I swear though, right. It's like a new emergent type of person that he just happened to be like perfect for. Cause like, those first years of the Joe Rogan podcast, it was just all like comedians for three hours talking. And then one by one, he was like, oh, I'm getting kind of into like this alpha brain. Let's have that guy on. Or I'm right, getting right. kind of into like this other thing. Let's have that person on. And then it just led to let's have like Barack Obama on. You know what I mean? Or I, I know, think that right? was, yeah. It yeah. Was Mark got- Maron's podcast, you know, after it's Mark Maron, you know, and then after yeah. a while, he's got the president of the United States on. You're like, how did how did it get here? How did Mark Marin get to interview the president of the United States? You know, oh, yeah, and now maybe after he interviewed Steven Spielberg, you know, or and Rogan like now is like Carson was then, or it's like if you if you did Joe Rogan podcast and Conan O'Brien's TV show like back to back, like the Joe Rogan thing is going to be so oh, much yeah, more. Not, I I know. I mean, I'm sure you do too. No comedians that have done like Stephen Colbert, and it's like, okay, yeah, I haven't seen it. Where, where, where can like I even see that? It's like, okay, great, you were at the Ed Sullivan Theater, but have you done Rogan? 
No. <laughs> I know it's, it's really cr- kind of crazy. It actually is crazy. Like he, he's so like, he retweeted me like years ago, just, I had an album coming out and he re- I asked a bunch of people to retweet it. And like within 30 seconds, Rogan did, but of receiving that email, he, he retweeted it. And I got so much fucking such a boost from that. Like that's the kind, that's how much power he has, you know? We're not like, that powerful, just so you know. Yeah. I'm expecting it. So I'm You'll expecting probably, like, um, lose followers oh actually no with with our track record will will probably end up on rogan in two weeks because every everyone that comes on this show they either just did rogan or they're going on rogan in like a week (laughs) my i'll get on rogan when you get on rogan you could bring up this podcast that would be appreciated i was gonna say we'll probably run into each other in the lobby that's like when they get down to us when they get down to the guys from from (laughs) Boston. Well, I'll be on at the same time. That's awesome. That's how comedy is, though, right? It's like, it's like, by the time, like, that's imposter syndrome, too. I'm like, yeah, by the time I'm on Rogan, it, like, won't be cool. Exactly. Was, who who yeah. said it? I think it was Groucho Marx. Like, I, I would never want to be a part of a club that would have me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but, like, when I meet someone famous or someone that I'm a fan of, they're no longer famous to me where I'm like, Oh, if you like, once I became friends with a lot of the, the Boston Bruins from being in the locker room every single day, the Boston Bruins were no longer this, like, 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 even though they were still like my age, it was still like, that's the Bruins. But now I'm just like, that's like a varsity team to me now. And I hate that. I completely get that. I completely understand that. It's because you saw their balls. Oh, it is. is well, it? It's kind of like what we were talking about earlier, though, with that weird psychological phenomenon. It's like once right. you see, I felt that way about the socks, like, and wrestling too. I was like, I kind of got involved in pro wrestling for a little while, and I was like, man, it was way more fun to like be a fan of this shit than it is to like be involved right. in this. Like, it's like these right. guys are fucking pain in the ass. There's all this like drama. I used and like now I'm talking to people the whole time at a show. Like I used to go to like an indie wrestling show and kind of like just watch and have fun and like meet a couple people. Now I'm like talking the whole time. I was like, this sucks. And it, it anything can kind of be like that. But I felt that with the Red Sox. In fact, now I'll like keep a safe distance. I'm like, I'll get to know a little. I'll, I like to dip my toes in, but I'm I'm not trying to like uh be friends with everybody too much because i like to kind of keep it as yeah that's what that. kind of depressed me a little bit too because like it also ruined my hate for like i still hate the montreal canadians but it's not like this this religious like hate for the montreal canadians yeah. because now like i knew guys that went and played there or guys that came here and like all of a sudden they were on the canadians now they're in the locker room and they're totally nice and they, they're like hey josh and you're and like, like Fuck. you start you start thinking like them you're like just get get your money man just get your money retire yes! with your head yes! intact you, know? <laughs> you can't play yeah. forever dude like definitely sign with them yeah. I'm like i i miss that hate that i had for them <laughs> like, i know i'm like that too the man. other night now you're like super nice to me you know that's yeah. a risk that's a risk though it's and I've run into that a few times and it's like, you must meet a lot of famous people. And it's like, yes, I'm very lucky that I've met a lot of famous people, but I've had experiences which have made me wary because it's kind of like I meet someone that I admire. And if they end up being a dick, then it's yeah. like, I feel like a fool. Like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll throw out, I'll throw Henry Rollins under the bus because he's been run over by a bus <laughs> about 600 times and he doesn't give never liked him anyway. And like, well, you know, I, he's a I love Henry Rollins and I'm, I was a huge, huge black fat, uh, black flag fan in high school because <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few, I've had a few whiskeys. Uh, her name is RuPaul. Okay. And that's what you're oh! to call. Shut up. Joe's over. Now, come on. I didn't. Come on. Oh, come on. It was the whiskey. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. (laughs) Fuck it. Don't be a racist (laughs) cock. Fine. Whatever. I'm done. That was a good one. I'm fucking done. Oh, that's the promo for the show right there. Uh, Oh, man. You guys are (laughs) I'm quitting early. Henry Rollins was in this really cool band called Black. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh fuck anyway i love the guy i i like followed black flag when i was in high school and they like you know they were just one of those things that kept me from fucking robbing banks and shooting people and i finally got to interview him 
and he was just a complete asshole. That sucks. And it was very disappointing. Yeah. And I felt, I felt kind of like I was, I was duped. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do. And, and so it's, it's like, I'm very fortunate in the job I've had where I've got to meet a lot of people, but at the same time, I get nervous about it because it's every time I, I talk to someone, it's like, they can be a dick. please don't be a dick. Please don't be a yeah. dick. Yeah. That, that was the Kevin James thing. I, I love his shit. And, and, and to go into that moment of just, just, just a quick, hi, how are you? I'm the radio guy doing the, and he was a fucking asshole. And it's like, I end up telling that story more than I really think he is a fucking good comedian. I love his shit. King yeah. Queen is, I'll watch it until I turn blue. I had another experience years ago and uh, God, it fucking was a while ago. God rest his soul. But Eddie Money came in and he mm. was a fuck, he was a fucking dick. He was oh, smoking yeah. lots in the fucking studio. Someone asked him to put a cigarette out. And he's like, fuck you. I'm like, oh, this is going to be cute. Wow. This is gonna be, yeah, he was a bit of a dick. My wife has the best, I think, the best Eddie Money story ever. Yeah. Right. So she was, she worked for a caterer. She worked for Struck Catering out of Worcester. And so these people who had a lot of money lived out in Princeton, Massachusetts, where Mount Wachusett is. And they had like one of those big giant houses. And so they got married and they had the reception back at their house. And so my wife's, you know, working in their kitchen and she's out there serving stuff and she's in the kitchen. All of a sudden this music starts playing and she's like, wow, this stereo is really loud. And she goes out there and it's fucking Eddie Money in the middle of nowhere, Massachusetts. And somebody at the wedding knew him and got him to come to the reception nice. to play a couple of tunes for the bride and groom. And they like got a pickup band and he played two tickets to paradise and like shake. He played two tickets to paradise twice. He started with it and he ended with it. And I think he only did five tunes. Nice. That's when you and know then, you're a real one hit one. <laughs> right. You know? and, then, and so like everyone's going crazy that's there. And then he, he's done. He comes back into the, uh, into the kitchen and he's like, Hey, is there any beer back here? <laughs> and my wife's boss goes, yeah, there's uh, there's some Heineken's over there and there's some, uh, some uh, Corona's. And instead of going over and just pulling them out of the cooler, he picks up the entire thing and walks out with it and leaves. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. The, he took, like, <laughs> took like a case of beer with him. <laughs> this just took off out of Princeton That's fucking Massachusetts. He's like, this is my fee for having to play that fucking song again. <laughs> My wife is like, over and over like, you again. fucking saw any money in a living room. That's the best. You know? <laughs> <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ. You know, it's like, see, it, it's like, see, you know, I, there's this guy in this band, Thelonious Monster. His name is uh, Bob. Oh, Bob Forrest. You ever see him with Dr. Drew? He's the guy with the hat. Yeah. Bob, yes, have, Bob yeah. Forrest. They, they, they made us watch a video of. <laughs> right. So he, he used to be like this tremendous heroin addict. And uh, he was in, he fronted this band called Thelonious Monsters, like one of my favorite bands. So he, I lived in Richmond, Virginia. He came out there to get away from heroin dealers from Los Angeles. Little did he know at that time in the nineties, Richmond was the heroin capital of the East coast. So I think he you might've known a little bit. He's <laughs> all up, right. And he hard, decides he to get a pickup band and play a show at this local club. And so he's there, I'm there. I'm like, I can't believe I'm going to see Bob Forrest. This is going to be great. I go back into the bathroom. Now this club was called Twisters and they had, um, they had stalls in their bathroom. They had a stall in their bathroom, but it wasn't like a regular stall. It was basically a chain link fence stall because they didn't want people to have sex or do drugs in the stall. So if you walked in there- So no fun. Right, yeah, right. Exactly, no fun. So I walk in there and he, I've already told, I already talked to him about this interview, so it's fine if it's out there. Um, there's Bob Forrest taking a fucking shit, <laughs> right? It's kind of like what you were talking about. Not so much Taylor Swift, more like yeah, underground ninety still. indies rock band. But there's Bob Forrest taking a shit, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, uh, oh, hey, and he's like, God damn it, this is fucking embarrassing. I can't, why don't they have regular stalls in this fucking place? And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go pee at the Chinese restaurant next door. Oh my God. <laughs> By the way, you're the fucking best. Uh, can't wait for the show. And it was just, it was just like, you know, it was weird. And it's like that, you know, that's like, yes. he shits like, a, like, like the rest of us. But yeah. you, you, you also get that a lot at the, the radio station too, when like you'd go into the bathroom and you'd be like, Oh, hey, Kurt Schilling. I'm just going to piss next to yeah. you. All right. right. 
at know, first I, I, Kurt LB, um, I didn't know how large Kurt Schilling really was. I almost went, hey, kid. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, it's Kurt Schilling. Uh, <laughs> okay, Kurt Schilling. Sorry, I'm Asian. Oh. <laughs> Boy, you fucking ended the show twice today. Thank you. <laughs> And you know who I was psyched? I, I had a starstruck moment once seeing Merloni in the bathroom at uh at Intercom. <laughs> you saw him in his like bow, every day bow for legs. Me. Like I just didn't expect it. You know what I mean? Like I was kind of like, oh shit, who Merloni? Yeah, I that was yeah, I saw him every day. And at first it was like, wow, fucking cool. Lou Merloni. Yeah, you know, that's <laughs> yeah. great. And then I'd be like, hey Lou, what's going on? And he'd like walk right by me, not even look at oh, me. Oh, so so like, it wasn't oh, just okay. me. Hey, how's it going? No, just uh, you, man. If anybody works. For I you. mean, that's like the that's that's when you really actually befriend someone that you looked up to. It becomes extra weird. Like Steve right. Sweeney is a guy that I used to look up to when I was like eleven. You know what I mean? And now sometimes I'm like, Ugh, Steve's calling again. I know he's got a problem. Like this is gonna be this is gonna be oh, ass. Shit. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> not like not like I don't like I love it when he calls, but sometimes you know like. He's calling up multiple times in a day. You're like, he's going to need, like, he's going through something or something like that. Not, but it's like, that's the stages sometimes of like knowing someone who was your hero is like, at first you're like, I can't believe right. I'm friends with this guy. And then you just actually are friends. And then they just start to bug you like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, It's like all of a sudden you forget who they are. Like when, like, it, it's hard to have a conversation with them. I feel like I did this podcast with Andrew Raycroft for a long time and we did it from his house. And I was like, I you, I stood in line for an hour one time to get his autograph. And now I'm just sitting in his house. And it's like, he would be talking. Yeah. And then I'd be like, I'm not listening to anything he's saying. Because over and over in my head, I'm like, I'm in Andrew Raycroft's house. And it's just yeah. like, that's louder than what he's saying. But And then it's like, to I, be friends with Lenny Clark. People. And like, it's, you forget yeah. how you viewed them. Right. I can tell people feel that way at my house. Oh, God. Yeah. Is that right? Holy shit, that's the fucking I wouldn't know Honda because guy. you've never invited me over. Holy so. fuck, it's yeah, the guy sold. Is that the guy from guy. the fucking Essen video? No. Okay. Up, you know, hey, I I have a CRV. Just want to let you know. I have a CRV. <laughs> you know, can you, can you, do, you say, AAA. do you say this is how we Honda? <laughs> uh, we don't say that. We say around here, we Honda. And Thank that's you. why every there time I man. see you, I get so starstruck. Oh, God. I, I, well, I, I actually... I actually Oh, go ahead. People Will. recognize me, they get sad. They go, Hey, uh, that night for someone like they're like, they, This is the first five minutes. It's like they can't figure out. They think it's like AA, oh. they think it's high school, they think it's like something. <laughs> and then they and then they go, Are you uh, the guy from the car Honda commercials? And I go, Yeah. And then they go, Man, I can't believe I watched so much TV that I recognize guys from commercials. I didn't even like recognize awesome. you without the skip ad button in the bottom right. Uh, oh. You were like that my, buddy, um, my buddy Kevin at the at the weed dinner. Remember? Yeah. You, you came up to say goodbye and you were like, you know what? I've seen you somewhere. And he goes, yeah, I, I think I know you from somewhere. You guys went back and forth a little bit trying to figure out if you've seen somebody before. I know. And I never figured it out, though. But I had a fucking weed dinner, too. I have met that guy before. You're so fucked up on the sauce. You're like, I think I know you. I'm going to go so high. So I mean, high. it really was. Isaiah, it really was like that, though. It was like, by by the end of it, it was like, do I know you from somewhere, man? Yeah, yeah everybody's like, like weird. One of the guys... <laughs> One of the guys from the football team was like, are you going to come watch us play? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right there. I'd love to join absolutely. your drum circle. Yeah, yeah it was, absolutely. It was just that... It was it was like an indica. I actually really enjoyed it. And it was funny. It was an hour drive back and like halfway through the drive, it started to wear off a little bit. So I started smoking in my car. <laughs> that is fucking awesome. Because I was like, oh, come on. I still got 30 minutes to Boston. And this yeah, what the hell? Feels good. The Pike's a straight line. What the fuck? You know? Yeah. Why we, need to get, we, we, we need to get Josh high. I don't know. I mean, about that let's, let, why not? Uh, Dude, we drink, get turtles drink? high and cats high in high school. Let's get Josh high. I, yeah, I, Josh. I, I do, drink. I do drink. Well, I, yeah. I'm, I'm no. not right now, but um, 
yeah, I, I would like to quit that and, you know, pick something else like more adulty like Coke, but you know, what? <laughs> yeah, Christ, no, 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 no. Everyone's like, doing Coke. weed these days. But like, I'm, I'm turning 30 in August and I was thinking, I was like, how have I gone this long and not really like done any drugs? I was like, I, I don't want to die and not know what they all feel like. And I was like, you're, so you're, not- paranoid. you're, you're very it's- paranoid as it is. So if you go into a situation where you get high or God forbid, when you told that story about doing mushrooms, you'd hop out a fucking window. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or at least be afraid um, that you, at least spend the whole time just being afraid of that. You know what I mean? Right. Like, well, I'm, I'll, I'll obviously fall. record it though. So that, you know, for the views, yeah. but you know, I think the last time I did mushrooms, I was like 22. And I remember thinking I'm, I'm too old for this shit now. Like I was like, <laughs> I was like 22 oh, yeah. and I was like, man, I got too much responsibility in my life. Right? Like this shit was fun when I was 18, but now I can't handle it. You know? like, I, I, there was, there was a time where I'd trip for like three days straight. I just keep oh. taking acid and keep it going yeah. and like if i took acid now like i'd be like oh this is fucking great and then it's like oh did i pay the mortgage this month yeah you drive oh yourself to the hospital my life, my <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know and that's so it you're true. done you're calling 911. the fucking emt is like oh this guy's a fucking pussy <laughs> I remember yeah i used to do mushrooms like, then i got a job <laughs> someone offered me peyote like six years ago and i was like Dude, I don't even have health insurance. Like, I'm going to take this and all I'm going to think about is how I don't have health insurance. Right. Yes. <laughs> right? That's not fun. <laughs> That's fucking awful. Yes. Yeah. Like, you're supposed to do drugs when you're like 19, 20, 21, 23. Like, invincible. 23. Yeah. That's what Ari Shafir told me. Best perfect age. age. That's it really is age. a perfect age. Yeah. 23, 24 are great years. Those Just are take all the drugs years. and be like, oh, hey, Bob Forrest. Oh yeah. Yeah, like I, feel bad for an afternoon. Like you can like do a you can like have a Coke binge that lasts for like two days and you're like by noon on the last day, you're like, oh, I feel better. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah, right. Yeah. You do that now, you're down for a week. Oh my, oh my god. god. It's like I had too many champagnes like at a at a thing and I felt it for three days. I was like right. Dehydrated. yeah that's that's when i knew i was starting to get old was when i started getting hangovers like i used to like pride myself and be like i don't get hung over like i'll get hammered and i'll feel great the next morning and now it's like it takes me two days to recover and i'm like yeah. I'm, I'm buying pedialyte and i'm like we need to oh. cool it <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna like be someone's go- dad in a week you could I- you could like go and be you know you could like not sleep for two days when you're 23 and then it's just kind of like whatever. Hold on, you Will know. just caught on to that. He's gonna. Be I didn't know you were gonna have a kid. Oh, you didn't know that? Oh yeah. Congratulations, no. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, no. Look at my podcast studio. I thought this whole time he was like, "I'm not. I'm not drinking right now." It was just because he was like, "No, there's, there's a little podcast studio, man. That's got that's got character." That Dude, used to have Steve-O's mugshot up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you passed out on the floor in there one time. Things have changed. You've grown up. I did. I'm, I'm feeling, uh, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with how not freaking out I'm, I'm being Don't right now, think about it. but it. I'm just, I'm like, why am I not panicking more? It's, I don't know. You will. Well, you're well because it's it. natural. I mean, you're, yeah. you're supposed to, you know, people have kids. It's life. You're yeah. Just doing that's what, that's what do. I, I got to keep reminding myself. Like I'll, I'll just go to Walmart to be like, these people figured it out. The, so right. I can't. <laughs> Like there's, yeah. there's well, people that I'm like, power. you can't even <laughs> zip up your own pants and you have six kids with you right now. I'm like, <laughs> but like, just you go to Walmart and look at the kids there and then you'll feel better as a parent. And I'm like, these people spend all their money on meth and the fishing section. And I'm like, I'm already ahead of them. <laughs> I don't think you're wrong though. Stuff like that. I try and have that philosophy about it. It's like, you know, like, um, I mean, this is a different thing, but like when someone like <laughs> I was kind of teasing someone the other day, they're, they're older and their mom died. And I was like, oh, my God, that's terrible. And you're teasing <laughs> them? <laughs> well, he goes like, <laughs> Think about what you just said. I was teasing them and their mom died. Well, not to their face. They were face. being total pussies about it. Not to their face. Yeah. I'm trying not to say the person, but it, it, it had been it's been months. And I go, <laughs> how old was she? And he goes, she was in her 90s. And I was like. Well, you know, I'm like, I'm sorry, you know, but it's like, you're not the first person 
to have a mother in their nineties die. Get over it, buddy. Wait, hold on. Hold on. What, what was it? A was right. it a Harley accident? Was it a skydive? Yeah. How was oh, it? Was fuck. I, I just so he 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 talked about it like you know gone too soon, man. Like I don't know how, how this happened to us. And I was like, well, you know, like. <laughs> It's been six months and she lived to be 94. So maybe, like, you know, like consider yourself very lucky. Why didn't you just fucking look at her and say, you know, people die every day? Sorry, buddy. Fuck. That's kind of what I did say. (laughs) But it's like when stuff like that happens to me, I do feel sad, but I try, I don't feel like this. Why is this happening to me? I'm like, babies are born, people die. Like, stuff like that is always happening. Like, you know, when you have a bad set, 1% 1% of people on earth know what that feels like. All right. But when your mom yeah. dies, like a lot of people right. know what that feels like. Hmm. You, know, you know, Will, I'm noticing you're very thoughtful and you give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, I'm butchering this story, but it was like, if you knew the whole story, you'd agree with me. It was like, no, it was I, like. I'm learning a lot. Oh. Jesus. I just think people should get over things quickly. That's all. I'm like, you there take you a go. day to feel yes. sad sure. about it. Just have yeah. a short memory about it. And like you said, Will, no one percent of people knows what it's like to bomb on stage. It's like, I'm sorry oh. your mom died, but have you been in a silent room when you're trying to be funny? Because <laughs> <laughs> that feels worse. Oh my you know, god! Yeah. What you just said there, you know, take a day, get over it, whatever. You know what? You would be awesome in management, right? <laughs> for anything, for any business, HR. I, I mean, I've only experienced <laughs> radio managers, but the what you just said there, I was like, this guy's destined to head a fucking corporation. I could do right it now. Yeah. I think I could do it. Oh, your grandmother died. That's great. Uh, I need you to come in. Move on. Right. Yeah, that's what grandmas <laughs> do, bro. Yeah, they, your grandma. They bake cookies fucking, and they die. They're not going to seal the fucking Stouffer's deal. All right. I just I just consider anything over like eighty five to be like every day is a gift oh, and you're free lucky. Time. Free time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like when, when, when I think of like when I'm dying, I don't think of like when I'm ninety. I'm thinking like, you know, early seventies. Like that's yeah. you know you think what, you're dying all the time though. Your your heart speeds up and you call me and you're like, I'm fucking dying. I'm like, no, you're just freaking out. Breathe. Well, that was the first time I ever took my own blood pressure and it was alarming. <laughs> Oh, I, I told him, I'm like, dude, you got to get get a Fitbit. He's like, I don't want to see my heart's going fucking too no, hard. I'm like, a Fitbit, Josh. That'll just, it'll just. Oh, I, I had one and I. Oh, no. It broke. <laughs> it so did you got, because of playoff hypo, hockey. What's that? Hypochondriac, Josh. Oh, yeah. Big time. He's all I, like, I, I got a, I got, I've sort of been in and out of that my whole life. I got, I go through, I can get that way. I can get like, that's where my anxiety presents. If I'm, yes. if I'm feeling anxious about something in my life. I'll start to worry about I'm dying. Stuff. Yeah. But I'll like I'll I'll think, think again, that. going like comparing myself to other people, like I'll I'll start feeling guilty about the amount that I drink. And I'm like, oh my I probably have like cirrhosis of the liver. And I just start going through all these problems that alcoholics yeah. have. And I'm like, it's probably enlarged. My liver's probably actually black. And then I think of like Duff McKagan, who would like drink his puke to get the vomit to get the the alcohol back in him. And I'm like, well, I'm not there yet. So I'm, I think about yeah. that. People do I mean, heroin. His pancreas, his it's very common in, in comedy, yeah. by the way. Sorry, Mike. Uh, it's, no, no, go ahead. It's very go common. Ahead. Hypochondria is super common in uh, yeah. stand-up comedy. Yeah. Oh, my God. I When I met you Richard to, Lewis. To, yeah, right. Don't you have to be like, like Richard Lewis? Don't you have to have – it's a sickness. This guy – It is like, a little bit. It is right, like well, even like in in radio, because this uh, this guy I admire, Jeff Charles, he worked at HJY in the afternoon. Uh, he was awesome. He was out of his fucking mind. The guy was supposedly a Green Beret, supposedly one of the first Navy SEALs, uh, supposedly helped start the WW. I mean, this guy was like you know one of the those most interesting men in the world. But it was just like holy shit! I forgot what I was talking about. I know I've I've been there with wow. I've opened yeah. for comedians. No, but I've opened for. I'm gonna com- put a plug in for these people because it's really working <laughs> on my brain right I, uh, now. What was I, I saying? Love, I love when uh I love when like the professional broadcaster from right. AAF just frails off. <laughs> so anyway, oh what the wow. fuck? Wow, that was an LB moment, right? LB, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> guy, guy's a floater. He doesn't know what he's doing. I, uh, I mean, he can't do anything from his left, and then. <laughs> And again, 
<laughs> but see, like when that happens uh, to me, I'm like, well, Shu would never do that. Just trail off and forget what he's talking about. Yeah, I've gotten to so that. So I, I had a psychiatrist tell me that the same part of a brain that like gives a bad anxiety problem is like the same part of a brain that like makes a good comic. It's like fast thinking. It's like it makes connections very quickly. It, uh, you know, is reflexive and impulsive. So it's like, it's sort of the gift and the curse. It's like the same thing that makes you funny in like one second can like think of a horrible scenario that scares the shit out of you in one second. It's like the same muscle in your brain that's doing that, you know? So I kind of just go every time I get really out there anxious, I'm like, this is just because I'm such a fucking genius. That's all. I just need to dial this shit back. Just let it pass. But it's it's so funny, funny that, like, uh, the amount of, like, comedians that I know are similar to me in the way of, like, you can get up in front of a room of a thousand people, strangers you've never met, and, like, do jokes and try and make them laugh. But at a cookout... Like I can't, I can't handle it. I can't, I'm, yeah. I'm off in the corner. No, no I'm way. just like, I don't talk at family functions or events or whatever. And I heard Robin Williams say something like, he was like, I think I'm like antisocial because he was like, when you have the mic, you control the situation at a cookout. Right. You have no control sure. over anything. And I'm like, Oh, I'm a control freak. Okay. Yeah, it's right. definitely. <laughs> I, I think that's common. I much prefer to be in front of a crowd than even in the crowd watching something else you know but it's one-on-one like, -on -one conversations scare me way more than 500 people <laughs> yeah I think it's grandpa did you uh did you remember what you were gonna fucking say yeah. <laughs> i got a question so so what you're talking about will is this sickness for lack of a better word and it's like it's yeah. that it's that part of your brain that makes you think in in seconds like this is funny but at the same time you know this is terrifying so you think people like maybe Robin Williams or that could, I don't know. I think about it, that might be a bad example, but someone like say so super successful, like Kevin Hart, Joe Rogan, something like that. They're right. able to harness that feeling and recognize that. Okay. This is a feeling that I thought was a curse. Cause it makes me feel scared and shitty and, you know, worthless all the time. But that's the only time my brain is at a hundred percent. And so they've, it's... you know, they've like kind of harnessed that or accepted that. And that's part of, maybe i don't know i've met guys like i've met guys who seem to not have it as like some guys in comedy everyone's sort of like is you know when you like make a character in a video game and you have like a certain amount of points that you have to like like spread out over a character yeah. that's kind of like what every comedian is like given the same amount of points and like we all spend them different ways and like some guys like they really don't have a lot of like neurosis or anxiety you think and then one day they have like this huge breakdown and then there's guys like me and josh who are like always fucking nervous but then again like we keep like moving into apartments having relationships babies doing right. stuff you know what i mean <laughs> so it's like it. right so it's like as long as you're living your life it successfully it kind of doesn't really matter but it's it does seem to me like we're all sort of a mess in a weird way some guys more so than others like ray romano very straight laced guy, yeah. very like normal guy, but he's extremely neurotic. Like he's got a lot of worries, extremely, yep. uh, extreme hypochondriac. Like now a guy like uh, Andrew Dice Clay, you would probably be like, wow, that guy's so confident. And so like, you know, but he's like pretty fucking weird off stage and he's got a lot of like personal issues. And or like Eddie Brian Murphy. Regan, like he comes off as like squeaky clean and goofy, but it's like, that's an angry guy. That. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't think any of us, I don't think, but I think the same goes for, like, you know, authors and, like, all kinds of creative people. It's just, like, it's, like, uh, it's so it's so much easier to see, like, when the plumber is at work and when he's not at work. But, like, when a comedian is, like, we only really work for, like, an hour a day and the rest of it is kind of, like, this weird thought experiment that we're kind of always in. I, so see the, like, the, the, I see the whole, like when you're working, I feel like that's when the work is done. Like the four hour radio show, that's when the work is done. And then the rest of yeah. the day you're at work up here. It's like, it, yeah, it's, it's constantly true. going like, it's just for me, I think it's like trying to harness the anxiety. Like, like Bill Burr has mastered his like ticks and anxiety into yelling into a mic in a controlled, well, but he's yeah. it, it's like an art for it's like boxing like i can kind of see 
where he's actually, I have no idea where he's going with it. Cause he'll just come out at the TD garden and be like, so abortion. I'm like, how is he going to get out of this? And then I'm like, <laughs> that's why he's so fun to watch where I'm like, how's he going to flip it to make it my fault? But it's just like yeah. finding that. template. Yeah. Just finding that template that works for you. And then and I, I guess they call it I finding your voice. With- when I'm on stage, I feel like I read, I heard this thing that Paul Newman said. He was like, when his son died tragically, he picked up race car driving. Cause he was like, when I'm driving a car, like 250 miles per hour, he's like, I can't think about my son. He's right, like, cause if right. I, all I can think about is the car and driving it. Cause it's like, you know, or I'll, or I'll crash. So it's like, that's what stand up is. It's like, you can be a neurotic prick all day, but like when you get up there and you actually care about getting laughs, now it's like, fuck that neurotic prick like all i'm thinking about is this and it feels good and like the laughs feel good and that's why i think you're seeing a lot of comedians like crack up right now like after a year of kind of like zoom and less shows and it's like we're we're meant to be out there on stage you just took the therapy away yeah for real for a lot of people you know and uh you know luckily i get booked because you know (laughs) 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 No, but I know a lot of, I, I think, I think all of us felt that like it's in one way or another, like, cause I can tell, like, I, you know, I, I do a fraction of the shows I used to do, but I feel so good for like two days after I do it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you can tell I'm like singing when I'm doing the dishes more, like just in a better right, It's mood, like, you know? it's like endorphins and it's like, yeah, like that. I, I love the best part of comedy is like the second after you get off stage, after you just killed it's like there's yeah but it, it only lasts like 10 minutes because then you're thinking about the next set and you're just back to square one <laughs> I, i'm getting just, a, i'm getting a i'm getting a good look into josh's neuroses here it's like everything is oh dude like we the got, second it ends dude we had a shrink <laughs> on the show specifically to peek yeah. into his head he called yeah. me afterwards and she said you do know he's really fucked up i'm like oh i, I have a good idea <laughs> yeah yeah so are I you thought I was complete. you take an ssri or anything I don't know what that. No, I'm not on anything. <laughs> no, he's taking Sam Adams. That's what he's a little doctor. Taking. I'm like Doctor Will. I'm like, Interesting, Josh. You know, I'm trying. <laughs> Looks like you might need some more. Yeah, because I, I, I mean, I used to. I really in my early 20s, I really had a hard time with like anxiety. I really did, and it's not. And it isn't something. It's like one of those things where, like, when you don't have it at all, it's like what? Like what, dude? Have a right. fucking beer and relax. You know what I mean? But like when it when it it can be it can be like anything it can eat up your whole day and it can make and it can, make it can you feel paralyze like you're crazy you can literally like no, it really I, can i'll have yeah. days where i need to like i'll have to pace back and forth to talk myself into hitting send on an email because my anxiety is just yeah. through the roof and i'm like just send the email no, it's really it's not even real it's hard <laughs> and i got i went on a like a zoloft prescription like I don't know, a decade ago over a decade ago i, I never regretted it man i was like is my girlfriend's hand grabbing some clothes. <laughs> Random hand uh, grabbing laundry. laundry. Will, my fiance. Like, you got to do laundry. Oh, congratulate. Look at us with, with big life movements, huh? See, yeah. anxiety kind of come a long things. And like, <laughs> right? Come a long way since the... I, I, I was thinking about the first time I met you was at an open mic, and I don't even know where... It was in Brighton. But I think back then, I didn't know what Brighton was. I just found yeah. the, the open mic on Google. And I was like, where the hell is Brighton? It was just this faraway land. And it was at like a pizza joint or something. And I remember, oh, was it Rogie's, I think? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, Rogie's yes. uh, over, over in Cleveland Circle. Over there. See, I don't know what Cleveland okay, Circle Josh is. Josh used but... to be like head to toe Bruins gear all the time when you'd see him. <laughs> That's that was my wardrobe. Josh. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's the Bart Bruins here to do his jokes tonight. Yeah. And that, um, that also ended immediately after being in the Bruins locker room because I was like, I could have went to high school with these guys. Now I feel like I'm one of their girlfriends wearing the jersey on like the Friday before the game. And I'm like, this, I can't be doing this. Because I remember, uh, I, I think it was Brandon Carlo. I was wearing a hat and he was like, I like that hat, like the, the snapback. He was like, what is it? And I took it off and I forgot what hat it was. And it was just a Bruins hat. And I was like, the one you get for free. Uh, <laughs> I was like, this is embarrassing. No more Bruins gear. He's like, oh, I play for them, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my team there. Yeah. Exactly. 
Dude, Who's your awesome. favorite player? I'll get him to sign it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chara came up to me and he's like, were you watching me in the shower? Yes. Hey. Stop <laughs> looking at my penis, little man. <laughs> like, I Why is it so bare? Broken jaw, you pussy. <laughs> And Chara is a monster. <laughs> when are when are fucking yeah, live shows coming back? Will what are you thinking in the next six months? Do you have anything anywhere? I don't give a fuck if it's a oh yeah we're, we're or... cre- it's like creeping back like okay. it's, uh, so like, right now you can see shows like Laugh Boston in Boston, the biggest comedy club in Boston is open, yeah. and they're doing shows. So I did some shows there. There's um, Giggles has a the bunch tent of in the city giggles i'm there i'm there friday next friday uh, nice. and then i'm in wakefield the next night but it's like all coming back i in my in my dreams i hoped everything just came back fast like i wanted it to be like a switch like where they were like yeah. now everyone yep. can go do comedy but yep. it's not happening like that it's just it's like i'm getting more and more stuff it's coming in and it's like but i still get these weeks here and there where there's just nothing going on and uh yeah, it's like being a new comedian back, again man. It's it like, is. And this, <laughs> this time of year would normally be like comedy normally slows down with the good weather. So, yeah. uh, so that happens, but it slows down and I you do know, more man. gigs at Hampton beach. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be at the I'll head out there. <laughs> I remember, uh, I, I remember intro in your show at Hampton. Don't be a fucking dick in the back room with a stripper. Okay. Yeah, I won't be, man. I I know you'll go talking about it on podcasts for years if I do. All fucking day. <laughs> that's the All only thing. Day. So that's the only thing I ever think about is like, you know, because sometimes it real like. So Josh was talking about having anxiety. Like, there was a time where I was in New York City, I had just like gotten locked out of the airbnb i was staying in and i was like how am i gonna get back in and i started to have like an anxiety attack and, like as i'm having it this guy walks up and he's like are you well in a comedian i saw you at skank fest man you're so fucking funny da, 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 da. and i was like great to meet you and i, I was just like <laughs> i went i was like what are you doing and I, I like i was like yeah i lost my shit i just told him what was happening to me but i was thinking i'm like that guy probably tells everyone he meets like man i met will Newton. he's fucking weird like he was sweaty <laughs> He was like talking really fast. House and yeah, he was on yeah. something. Oh yeah, uh, I, yeah, he was on coke for sure. You know what I mean? Right? I like, yeah. Oh yeah, people always recognize you at the worst time possible. It's <laughs> like I yeah. remember, my, I I didn't have a license at the time, and I was in the passenger seat, and my wife had just popped a tire because it was snowing hard. She had picked me up from the train station coming home from AF. And I, so like the tire was frozen. I couldn't get it off. I finally get the tire changed. We're in Natick. And then we start driving and there's a huge traffic jam. And this girl's going past like every car being like, my car is like got jackknived. It's like stuck. So like, if you could just like back up a little bit so we can try and get like the tow truck in or whatever. And she like stopped in the middle of saying it. And I'm just in the passenger seat with my hood on and my hat down low. And she's like, are you Josh Dolan? And I was like, oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> she was like, tell Danielle I said hi. Uh, okay, I will. <laughs> Dude, Will, tell all the kids again how the fuck we find your shit. I'm very easy. Will Noonan.com, Will Noonan on Twitter, Will Noonan the Comedian on Instagram. And if you type in Will Boston Comedian, you can find anything going on with me. Most you got to follow him on Facebook and like the video of you. Google him. With the fucking chin diaper. Oh, on, on, on Patriots Day on Nesson and Dave O'Brien said, that's one funny guy. No, I could have just, Lunan. I could have just died right there, man, and it would have been fun. <laughs> Speaking of dying right yeah. there, where where can people uh, catch you doing the uh, JFK reenactment? Oh, uh, I'll be in <laughs> Dallas. Nice, oh. nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's wow. headlining Dallas. You oh, made it, dude. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I that gives like, a hole know. in the head. <laughs> oh, on that note, the show's over. Yeah, <laughs> Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah All right, hold on, wait, Ruby. Yeah, Sometimes people, so, well, not to interrupt the outro, sometimes people do say to me, you look like a Kennedy, they yell it out while I'm on stage, and I'll say, lady, if I were a Kennedy, do you think I'd be in here in this bar doing comedy for you? Of course not. I'd be dead. Oh! <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Thanks, Will.
Will. Will Noonan. All right. Thank you, guys. Will Noonan. Will Noonan. All right. Will Thanks Noonan. Will. Appreciate it, man. Good seeing you, dude. Oh, my pleasure. Good to see you guys. And congrats, Josh. Oh, thank you. And congrats yeah, to you, too. Thank you, guys. This is Brad Marchand, and you're listening to Breaking the Ice with Josh Dolan. I don't think he would ever let a pizza get out the door before he buried the whole thing, so he likes to eat that kid.